Welcome to worship this morning. We are so glad that you're here worshiping with us. Uh, we have a few announcements before we get started, but at this exact moment, we are also worshiping out in the parking lot. So we're so thankful that wherever God gathers us, whether it's here in our sanctuary, in the parking lot, in our homes, that the promise of the Holy Spirit is always with us. So this morning, we worship with God's presence and God's promise. Today, there's a little change in our worship service. We will have the children's message go after the sermon today. And the reason why we're doing that different is because today we are thanking Will and we're also sending him off on his new adventure. So that'll be part of the children's message today. But again, we thank Will for all of his great gifts and his time and talents that he shared with us over the past few years. The other announcement that we have this morning is your Lutheran Memorial Church safe team and your council have decided to put on an in-person worship service. So on Wednesday night, uh, August 5th at 6.30 p.m., we will have a worship here at church. We will be in the social hall and we ask that everyone sign up so that we can know how many numbers we have and who to expect. So you can call into the church at any point this week and sign up for that, or you can go online and put in your information and who's attending. So again, we ask for you to sign up if you would like to come to that service. Uh, and we also want to let you know that we are continuing to use our oomph. As Pastor Rebecca introduced last week, utilize hand sanitizer, maintain the six feet of distance, face mask, and prayer. Again, those are some of the precautions we're taking to keep everyone safe. This service will be short. It'll be about 30 minutes, and we will have ushers there to screen people as they come in and usher them in safely, and then we'll have our worship service with communion, and then we'll usher you out safely. If you have any questions, please call in and ask us. But again, we are moving into phase three as the safe team, and that is with some in-person worship. So again, with plenty of prayer, we trust that God will guide us in this next phase of our lives together. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship.
We'll continue with our confession and forgiveness. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all of the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's reading is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. 
because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Welcome. This is a happy and a sad day because this is the last day for a long time that we get to celebrate God's holiness with Will as our musician. Paul has graciously offered to step into his place with the recording, but as Will goes, we want him to know for sure that God's love goes with him and our love goes with him. Will, if you would take these sticky tapes off and read them and put them on yourself, we would appreciate it. Wonderful. Well, I just want to, before I read all these, thank all of you uh, from the Congregational Luther Memorial for welcoming me so graciously in these last few years. It's been absolutely my blessing to serve this congregation, and I've just been feeling that love so much. At the time of recording just yesterday, I got engaged, and so my fiance Emma, and I will be moving to Chicago, but we will carry all of you with us in our hearts. So I just wanted to read some of these. This is from Jolyn Schwantes. Thank you for your harmonization. We are blessed. Okay, I'll stick this on me here. It's kind of hot in the sanctuary, so I <laughs> hope these don't fall off. Thanks, Will, for directing the choir the past couple of years, leading the liturgy with your beautiful voice, and for setting the music of the services. You are a very talented man who will accomplish many things in the future. Thanks for coming to LMC. This is from Barb. Thank you. Uh, from our choir, spirit ensemble, writing liturgical pieces, and personally taking a song I wrote and turning it into a choir piece will be a legacy left by our young musical genius, Will Brueggemann. Oh, you have made a lasting impact on me, and we thank you for it. Uh, Carl Higgins. Oh, how sweet. Thank you, Carl. We have learned a lot from Will and enjoyed working and singing with him on Sundays. This is from Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Oh my gosh, there's so many here. And then this is from Linda Hansen. Will, you have been a blessing to work with and you will be missed. Blessings as you continue on God's path. Thank you, Linda. Well, now we have one glass empty. Oh, thank you. And this last one from Pastor Rebecca says, Will, God has called you to be a blessing for others as you have so graciously blessed us, Pastor Rebecca. Well, as you can see, I am now filled with uh, the love and support of this congregation. So I just want to thank you all again for this incredible blessing. And don't go away, Will. Stay unmasked, but I will put my mask back on. I don't know if you know how incredibly special this is. But Will Brueggemann wrote a liturgy, especially for Luther Memorial Congregation, an incredible, a rare, and a wonderful gift. And so we have reprinted it so that it will stand up and it will last, and we'll have him back someday to come and play his liturgy with us again. And Will, as you go with the sticky blessings, know that our blessings go with you. And this is just the start of the cards that will come. And that's Thanks, not all. So on behalf of the congregation, Will, and, and usually when uh, someone leaves like you are, uh, we would have a welcome lunch and we would have after worship, everyone would get to come and bring you cards and, and we would uh, have that time of celebration. But obviously as we move together in this new world, we're doing this also virtually. So um, to the congregation, if you have cards and well wishes you'd like to send, please bring them or send them to the church and we'll be gathering those and sending them to Will once he's, once he's uh, uh, settled in, in, in Chicago. So with that, um, we would just wanna offer you some, some additional thanks from the congregation, from the council. Uh, it's just been a blessing to have you and the sharing of your talents and the, the, the quality that you've given us in, in worship and in just coming up with the way to do this the way that we have been these past months. It, it wouldn't, uh, have happened without you. We wouldn't be where we're at today without you, and we definitely uh, want to thank you for that. Thank um, you. We have an, another card here that is from the congregation, so I'll just add that thank to your you. basket. And then my understanding is is that you come to work and you have a bag 
uh-huh. that you bring things in. And I, I, I'm seeing the bag now. Pastor Rebecca has it. It's quite the spectacle. <laughs> I don't know what is that? A TJ Maxx? Should we show it on the? <laughs> This, this is my mom's, actually, so she's probably going to be embarrassed that she lent this to me for groceries, and I've been using it for this. And so there, I see a hole in the corner, but <laughs> we, we thought as a council that a fitting tribute to your service here is, is a, a suitable replacement wow. and, and bag that you can take with you wherever you go. Thank and hopefully you. that will serve your needs. Oh, thank you so much. This is beautiful. I will treasure this every time I use it. Thank Wonderful. you so much. Thank you, Will. And I'm going to bring you back in, Will. Oh, I'm we're not here. we're not done with you yet. So during a worship service, when we send someone off with God's blessing, you could step a little closer there, Will. We normally pray for them and put our hands on them, and we can still pray even though it's virtually. So I encourage everyone in the congregation to raise your hand, and that is your prayer and your support towards Will as we say this prayer. So I hope you feel the love of this congregation, God's (laughs) love that goes with you, Will. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for Will and for our life together in this congregation and in this community. As he has been a blessing to us, so now send him forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We bless you and we thank you, Will. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. Today's gospel comes from the 14th chapter of St. Matthew. Jesus has been wandering through with the mustard seeds and the sticky love of God through the yeast. And then John the Baptist is killed. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, Jesus saw a great crowd. He had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven. He blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets in all. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you join me in prayer? God, there is no way to thank you for your grace to us. Thank you for the gift of this particular miracle, which rings in our hearts. We have heard and need to hear yet again and again. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, we've just read from the Gospel of Matthew. And the story of God's love that comes through the Gospel of Matthew is remarkable indeed. And the Gospel can kind of roughly be divided into three parts. There's the first part, Jesus' birth, and then the escape to and the escape from Egypt. 
and then later the baptism by the Jordan and the temptations he went through, that completes the first part. The second part opens with the words that John the Baptist has been arrested. John, the prophet who went around saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As soon as Jesus hears that he's arrested, Jesus goes throughout the land saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then Jesus reaches out to the crowds and looks on them with compassion. Over and over again in this second section, Jesus reaches out to the crowds with compassion. As this part goes on in Matthew, Jesus hears again that this time John is killed. When he heard this, Jesus withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. Auntie had compassion on them and cured their sick. This is today's gospel. But the crowds for whom Jesus cares become a major point of attention throughout this second part of Matthew's gospel. And it concludes with that dramatic statement by Peter saying, you are Messiah, the son of the living God. And then the third section starts. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day raised. And so begins the third and the final section of Matthew's Gospel. And from that point on, it builds into an amazing crescendo and finally concludes with the death, the resurrection of Jesus and that final proclamation, you go therefore into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them whatever I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always through the end of the world. Oh, it's a great gospel. And now, while most of Matthew's gospel is directed to showing us who he is, this Jesus, accepting Peter's words that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, I'm interested in who they were, these crowds, for whom Jesus consistently shows such compassion. And wondering led me to maps. Who are these, these crowds? Who are they to whom Jesus is speaking? Though this is a map of the modern Mideast, the land masses and the oceans haven't changed. We have here the Sinai Peninsula and this tiny band of fertile land is a land today we call Israel. Over here, we've got the great Mediterranean Sea. Over here, the Syrian and the Arabian deserts. And if you wanted to exchange the ivories and the spices of China, you would come down through this way, through this narrow strip, this land bridge, into Egypt and all of Africa, where you could find the gold and other beautiful stones. And you could bring those up again through this narrow land and take them on to all of Europe. And there you would find the goods and the salts and the things of Europe. The merchants and the commerce went through this tiny land, maybe 50 miles at the most, and here you have the sea, and here you have the deserts. And so as the merchants and commerce were going through the land we today call Israel, they would stop in that pleasant land, and they would exchange or barter some of their goods for a little bit of food or a little bit of water. And as they went through the land, surely they would hear about the great preacher John the Baptist Oh, everybody knew about the John the Baptist sermons. They would go down to the Jordan and listen. But John was arrested and then killed. And there was another one who came, one Jesus, who when speaking spoke with power and conviction and did amazing things. And so perhaps the merchants would stop to listen to Jesus. And some would stay and pay attention, and others would listen and go. But those who stayed and those who went would take some of the tales and the stories with them, and they would spread those tales and those stories throughout the known world. And later, of course, beyond the oceans, to a world no one then yet imagined. 
as today's text open. Jesus looks at the crowds, and he has compassion for them. And in those crowds were surely many local Jewish people, but were also many from all the different lands, from Europe and Africa and Asia, from Mongolia, from Greece, from Rome, and from the Celts. They were there, listening along with the crowds, and Jesus has compassion on them all. And as today's text opens, Jesus, sick with exhaustion and hurt by the news of John the Baptist's death, goes away in a boat by himself, but the crowds follow. And when Jesus goes ashore, seeing the crowds, he has compassion for them. And as the day goes on and things go on, his disciples come to him and say, Jesus, the hour is now late and this is a deserted place. Send them away that they may go food, get food. Jesus said to them, you feed them. But, but we only have five loaves and, and, and two fish. And so begins one of the greatest miracles in all of the Bible. This miracle is repeated in each gospel and twice in Matthew and Mark. It is eclipsed only by Holy Communion at the dinner table when Jesus gives to the people the new interpretation of the Seder, gives to the people forgiveness of sin and himself in the partaking of the bread and the wine. And it is eclipsed, of course, by the resurrection to which there is no equal. But back to the miracle. Jesus takes the loaves and the fish. He has the people sit down. He looks up to heaven. He breaks, blesses, and gives the loaves, loaves to the disciples who give them to the crowds. Disciples, are you listening? We are those who take the blessing and we give them to the crowds. And you know the story. After the taking, the blessing, the breaking, and the giving, there are 12 baskets of food left over and more than 5,000 men besides women and children. This is a grand miracle. In the following and the trusting of God, miracles happen. In the giving of our offerings to God and to our community, miracles happen. Too often, we have limited ourselves in fear. Too often, churches have tried to limit the power of God by giving only certain people the right people, the ability to come to the communion table or to be part of their congregation. But leaning on this miracle in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to the disciples. He took the wine and he gave it to the disciples and he said, this wine is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. There is no bar to the entry of the crowds into the kingdom of God. God's love, Jesus' love, the blood of the new covenant was given for all who will receive it. God's love is not influenced by poverty or wealth, by gender or by creed, by power or political party. God's love is offered to all who will receive it. It is as the prophet Isaiah said, if you're thirsty, come. If you're hungry, come. Buy wine and milk without money and without price. Delight yourself in rich food. Listen so that you may live. And this, as Pastor Louise has said, is the persistent, pervasive love of God. And it goes with us and it goes with our will as he leaves. And it stays with us and it will stay with will as he leaves and continues on his journey. God's love sticks to us, and God's love walks with us. 
Our day is a bit different today than when Jesus walked openly among the crowds. Our dangers are no longer great oceans or great deserts, but a virus which our scientists struggle to contain and a violence that walks our street. And still our crowds gather every bit as diverse as those with whom Jesus walked. And our crowds gather and they cry out for justice, for freedom, for healing, and for hope. And Jesus gathers with us. Jesus has not forgotten us. And Jesus is still reaching out to us. The unlimited love of God continues through the century, continues to call us in these days of COVID and the blight of racism. And the one who walked to the cross for us will walk with us through our isolation, through our fear, through the racism that plagues our street. Jesus is God, the son of the living God. Jesus is with us, for we are both the crowd and the disciples and those whom Jesus loves. And it is for us to offer our blessing, our ties, our hope, our grace to this community, to God, to one another. As you do, thanks be to God for you. Thanks be to God and be blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the world, for the church, and all those who are in need.
Gracious God, you take resources that appear to be meager. You bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage that we have caused to your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies, provide needed rain in places of drought, and protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness, that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Today we pray especially for Dave, Tom, Lauren, Marie, Doug and Marlis, Joan, Stephen and Claudia, Gloria, Caleb, Solemn, Eric, Darcy, Maureen, and Bobby. And Lord, we pray for all those who are experiencing loneliness and isolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give Luther Memorial Church such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord God, you gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another.
At this time, we thank you for your tithes and offerings and prayers that support the ministry of this congregation and this community. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now as we partake in communion together, I invite you to take your bread and your wine or juice, and you can serve yourself or those that you are with. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.